So I have these two questions that deal with the uh, circular motion and centripetal acceleration that I haven't done in the past. So let me do them now so that um, so that I can wrap it up and just have a videos done for every single question in homework. So this question says a particle travels in a circle, okay, of some radius. We are given the radius at a constant speed. Okay, that's nice. We are given some constant speed of 20 meters per second. What is the magnitude of the acceleration? And if you are thinking, oh, constant, so the acceleration must be zero. Um, please stop being silly. <laughs> so, you know, it's constant speed, but not constant velocity. Because in this circular motion, the direction is constantly changing. So there has to be acceleration. Uh, centripetal acceleration that is pointed towards the center. So at every point on this circle, the the velocity of the particle is changing direction so that it keeps going in this circle. So it's asking for that magnitude of this uh, centripetal acceleration. And uh, we went through the derivation, the textbook did, and I kind of stepped through the textbook derivation. So for this question, you just need to use the memorized formula. This uh, centripetal acceleration is given by V squared over R. So V not squared over R. I have this number. I have this number, 10.2 meters. So, and when you plug those units in, you get meter per second squared, perfect unit for acceleration. So, um, so 20 meter per second, second squared that number divided by 10.2 meters. That will give me a number of 39.2 uh, meter per second squared. That's pretty large acceleration, like uh, 4G, uh, four times gravitational acceleration. Um, so must be pretty strong force. Um, I, I guess uh, 4G probably isn't all that bad, um, but you do kind of feel crushed a little bit. But it, it's not like a, it's not dangerous to your health. Okay. The other question I needed to do was 9-6. So let me bring that up. Um, this one says a uh, fan is rotating at a constant some revolutions per minute. Uh, what is the... Oh, let me um, reuse this figure that I've drawn so that I don't have to draw a circle um, twice. <laughs> so, um, so what they are describing is um, not a particle that's moving all in a circle, but kind of an object that has some physical extent. Let me just draw the four um, or three blades of the uh, fan. And what they've given us is they are giving us a kind of frequency of rotation. So if there's some kind of how quickly it's uh, rotating, what they've told us is that it's undergoing some number of revolutions, 357 times, uh, revolutions or cycles or turns and over some amount of time per one minute. And so we are not going to talk about frequency in detail until a lot later when we do oscillations and waves. But um, it's a, I think it cycles per time. That's a kind of intuitive notion for people. So that's uh, what they've given. And they're asking for what is the magnitude of acceleration of a point on one of its blades, uh, 10 centimeters. Let me rewrite the number, 10 centimeters from the axis of rotation. Yeah, so in this question, we are not given the velocity of the tip. But I think if you reason through, you can kind of figure out the velocity of the tip yourself. So let me see if I can go through that reasoning process in the time. So you can think about, think of a one full revolution. So as you're thinking about one full revolution, you can think about what is the distance uh, traveled in that one full resolution. That's going to be the circumference of the circle or 2 pi times the radius of the circle. And so if you knew the amount of time, then you can say the speed is going to be the that distance divided by the amount of time. And the amount of time, well, so from frequency, you know, in one minute, you can go this many times around. So we could say, all right, amount of time 
it's going to be um, one minute, but not quite one minute because if it's one minute, then it's uh, uh, it, it, it goes more than once around. But if you divide that by 357, then that fraction of a minute will give you the amount of time for one cycle. So this is going to be the expression for delta t. Um, or in the numerical terms, it would be 1 over f. Um, because actually cycle is a real unit. <laughs> so I can, so I have this expression for my uh, velocity, that it's a distance 2 pi r divided by time 1 over f, or I can kind of simplify it and say my velocity of the tip is equal to uh, so 1 over 1 over f, so f now goes on the numerator, 2 pi times r times f. So with this expression for v0, now I can plug it in here, um, divide by r to get the centripetal acceleration. So um, let me do this in all from alpha. I don't feel like having to convert this unit for frequency into a basic SI unit. So let me just... Uh, do this in alpha. <laughs> so expression for Vinat, it's going to be 2 pi times radius, 10 centimeter, times now the frequency. It'll be um, 357 cycles. Again, cycles not real unit. I'm just going to let it be. Divide by 1 minute. Um, all of that squared for Vinat squared, divided by the radius, 10 centimeters. And I think if I leave that alone, it'll give me, one of the units it'll give me will be meters per second squared. So make sure it understood me correctly. 2 pi r f uh, squared divided by that. Okay, good. Yeah, 139.8 meter per second squared or 140 meter per second squared. That is a high. And in fact, um, for some rotating objects, at some point they like break apart because um, the the amount of force required to maintain this centripetal acceleration, at some point it probably not at this, but um, at some high enough value it'll exceed the material strength and it'll just break it. It's material science stuff, civil engineering. Okay, so I think that's the question. That's all the centripetal acceleration questions that I haven't yet done. Um,